this is Explorations and Reading Promotion at the middle and secondary level. Um, I left Tanya's name on there. Tanya and I, um, were, we planned this together. We were going to present this together. Um, and I will be sharing things that both Tanya and myself did. Um, uh, however, over the summer, Tanya moved into admin. So um, she was very sorry she wasn't able to join us uh, today. Um, but um, she uh, she sends her regrets. She uh, she is at the, the PVP conference for our, our district. So um, I, uh, I, I know that they started with a territorial acknowledgement this morning, but um, I just wanted to share our territorial acknowledgement that we use here in our district. Um, it's that we would like to acknowledge the traditional territories of the Coast Salish um, peoples, the, specifically the Esquimalt Nation and the Songhees Nation, um, which are the nations um, that my school is built on. Um, we also recognize uh, the nations that uh, my school district, Souk School District, works with, Beecher Bay, Shiano Nation, and uh, Souk Nation, and New Chalnuth Pachidat Nation to the west. Um, we recognize this beautiful land, sea, and sky, and thank them for sharing sharing it with us. Um, and we always end with Haichka, Kleko Kleko. Um, and then I just wanted to share with you too, this is some beautiful artwork that um, was created to go along with our territorial acknowledgement. Um, so yes, I'm in the Souk School District, um, uh, I, um, which is on the island. Um, uh, this is just a little bit about our day, uh, what we're our, going to spend our time together on. Um, I'll share how this kind of project started. It's kind of, you know, we spent our year doing a little action research around um, reading promotion and how to get um, our middle school and high school students excited about reading, which um, is tends to be hard. Um, they don't, they, they tend to start, stop um, identifying as readers when once they get to us at middle and high school. Um, I'll share the examples uh, from Tanya for um, the high school. So that was Royal Bay Secondary. I'll share my examples from last year, which was Journey Middle School. Um, and then I do want to leave time for sharing um, and ideas and some collaboration and just discussion as well. So just a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm a teacher librarian. I, I work in the Souk School District. Um, I've been in the Souk School District for, I believe this is my fifth year. Prior to that, I was in the Vic Greater Victoria School District. Um, last year, which is where all this is coming from, I was at Journey Middle School. Um, I am now at a Cole John Stubbs Memorial, which is a K-8 French immersion. Um, I'm the Souk Teacher Librarian President, uh, the Souk Teacher Librarian Association President. I'm also a member at large on the BCTLA Exec. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, does anybody, you can introduce yourselves, introduce yourselves in the chat. Uh, welcome, you're welcome to just unmute yourself and say hello, say where you're from, what levels do you teach? Um, like, do, are we all middle and high school? Do we have some, are, are we all teacher librarians or? Feel free to just unmute yourself or put something in the chat. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm from Port Alberni, and I teach at the high school, which is 8 to 12. Excellent. Thank you. I'm Megan from Salmon Arm, um, Shushwap Middle School, and we are uh, English and French immersion. Excellent. Good morning. I'm Julie Hunt. I'm a um, teacher librarian in two elementary schools in West Van, uh, which are K to seven. Wonderful. Yeah, and we've got some K to seven and middle school, secondary in the chat. I'm uh, Nicole Benes. I'm the teacher librarian at an elementary school in Pemberton every morning and at the high school in our small town every afternoon. Ah, excellent. So you get a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Excellent. Yeah, and we got a lot of secondary um, people in the chat, which is great. Six to 12, 10 to 12, uh, nine to 12. Oh, junior kindergarten to 12. Awesome. K to sevens as well. Fantastic. And from all over the place. Oh, and a student teacher. Wonderful. Welcome. Um, and we all love library land, I'm sure. So yes, you can come and join us. Um, and some French immersion as well. Wonderful. Excellent. Um, so 
uh, all the years I've been, I, I was a middle school teacher before I became a, a teacher librarian. I have been teacher librarian at elementary um, and middle. Um, I have up until this year, uh, every time I've been a teacher librarian, it's been in a dual track school. Um, my school this year now is, uh, we are only French immersion. So we just don't have any English classes at our school. But so that's my experience. Okay, so we'll get going. Oops. Uh, I'm scrolling on my mouse and it just goes way too fast. So we'll start with the high school. Oh my goodness. This is not going to work with my mouse. But the here we go. Oh, I put that in the wrong spot. So here's our why. Um, so we started with our, our um our local Souk Teacher Librarian um, book club last year was on this book, Hacking School Libraries. So this was where the idea came from. Um, and uh, what we did was um, um, we, we used this and, and this book as a as a jumping off point for a lot of different conversations. And it uh, we found it didn't really matter if you were a brand new teacher librarian, if you were an experienced teacher librarian, Everybody took something from this book, um, which was really great. I mean, you can see how many, like, all of my tabs. Um, so, but hack number 10, the last hack is um, celebrate reading every time, every and everywhere. And what we found was that there's so many other great ideas in this. It, I mean, it talks about maker spaces. It talks about how you set up your space. Um, there's so many other aspects to what we do, but at the heart of it, it's about celebrating reading every time and everywhere. And so what Tanya and I chose to do was, was really go back to the roots and focus on that um, for our middle school and high school students because, um, and, and these are two quotes just directly from this book. So the problem is that students view themselves as readers or non-readers. It's almost like there's no middle ground. Either I read or I don't read. Um, and particularly once we start getting to the middle school level, we start seeing that drop off and we start seeing our students um, just become disinterested and, and I just start stop identifying as a reader. Um, and then also their feelings toward reading develop as soon as they are old enough to hold a book, but change over time, depending on how they're exposed to books. So we wanted to see what we could do um, to really try to build a reading culture and develop a reading culture in our school and um, see if it would make a difference. So, uh, um, so these are, sorry, I put this in the wrong order. I apologize. These are some examples now from um, high school. So this is from Royal Bay Secondary School, which is in Colwood, um, a part of Victoria. Um, the TL was Tanya Phillips. Um, so one of the things they did was they uh, made buttons. Um, she is a button maker, um, which is super fun. And uh, so they made ask me what I'm reading buttons and they made them for themselves, but they also gave them out to kids um, if their students wanted to wear an ask me what I'm reading button, just to kind of share that excitement and have everybody, they got their admit, admin involved and anybody and everybody who wanted, who was reading and was happy to share what they were reading at any given time um, wore a button and so that it could encourage those kind of spontaneous conversations about like oh well what are you reading is it a good book is it um tell me about it um so that they found was successful for them as well um they also and you will notice a theme prizes work so um, we both found that, um, you know, sometimes you need a little external motivation. So um, uh, Tanya, there's a little coffee shop across the road from, um, from the school. And so she bought um, $10 coffee cards for the, for the local coffee shop. And um, she was using those as um, every month she would uh, if every any student who read a book wrote a review so that um, she could then start filling her um, destiny discover with reviews of books um, uh, and then they were entered for a coffee card um, because she was also hoping to then if if she could get more reviews um, then uh, then then in the in Destiny Discover, that might encourage other students to read books. Um, because one thing we both found is that having the students give the um, the recommendations 
often works far better once we start getting to middle school and high school that um, we're we're not cool um, like their peers are. And so uh, they won't off, they won't always listen to me and they won't always listen to Tanya when we say, hey, this is a really good book. You should try reading this. But if their peer says it, sometimes that message sticks a little bit more. So so Tanya tried to get at that with um, book reviews and uh, coffee cards. So that was one another thing they did. Um, she also experimented with some different displays. So I don't know if any of you have ever done any of these. Um, she did blind date with a book. I've also done that at middle school. I didn't do it last year, but I have done it in the past. Super successful. Um, uh, we usually do it around uh, February because then it's kind of, you know, Valentine's Day and every, um, and then you got that theme of, of a love and things like that. And so um, you wrap a book. Uh, and you write only the first sentence. So um, it's a little bit of background work for, for you. Um, and, and But good to find some of those books that maybe don't have a really great cover image or they're not super popular, but if the students would just open the book, then it would be, they, they would fall in love with it. Um, and maybe it's got a really great hook. And so um, putting that on the cover and encouraging students to choose a book just based on the hook, just based on that first sentence. Um, so that was really successful. They could not keep um, enough books out and wrapped. They had a whole bunch of books pre-done and, and the students were just so excited. And it, so it created a lot of that excitement and a lot of that conversation um, around books and reading for them. Um, and then she did the, the book flicks um, uh, board, which um, you may have seen online previously, but, you know, just a play on Netflix and, and new releases, things that just came out, um, things that are trending. Um, so just to, you know, have something visual and nice and color and um, uh, to see what's, what's popular in the library right now. And then, oops, uh, there we go. Okay. Um, she also did week. So I don't know how many of you use Follett and use Destiny Discover, but um, up at the top of uh, Destiny Discover, where you've got your two um, your two little banners there, um, she would often create um, uh, one of these. It's like just a single slide in Google Slides, um, because then all of these um, um, and and all of these became links. So um, she was really trying to um, get students to put books on hold. She was really trying to get students to check out all the digital resources, the eBooks and the audio books that she had available. Um, in the Sora app, you can connect. So Sora is, for those of you who don't know, Sora is the version of OverDrive for schools. Libby is the version of OverDrive for public libraries. However, in Sora, um, you can also connect to your public library. Um, so we both uh, accessed that and pushed that last year because we found it was really great to have one place students could go, but then they could access both the digital resources that we purchased, but in the very same search, um, it populates um, results from the public library as well. So it doesn't matter who owns it. Um, the students can borrow it and read it or listen to it in the exact same place. Yes, Destiny Discover can be customized. Absolutely. Sounds like I needed to plan a different session about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so what she would do back to the Destiny Discover part um, uh, is that uh, she would make these in a slide, a Google slide, because then all of these images became links either to her, either to putting the book on hold, a link to the Sora, and all of these become links. She saves this as an image, posts it on the top of her Destiny Discover, but then links the image to the slide so that it's all clickable. Students see this image, they click this image, it takes them to the Google slide, and then they can click any one of these book covers. It will take them to the digital resource, or it will take them to um, the, the link to put it on hold in the Destiny catalog. Um, so that is a really great way to help leverage your Destiny Discover um, uh, and, and get some excitement there. Um, Sora, you do not have to pay for Sora. You do have to pay for 
items you buy on Sora. So there's no, like, I don't pay any monthly or yearly subscription fee to Sora, but I do have to pay for the books that I buy from them. Um, so when you sign up with Sora, you do have to, um, you have to commit to a certain, um, like a collection credit to get started, but you're allowed, you, you can choose what that is. Um, so, I mean, you could say that your collection credit is going to be $50, going to be a hundred dollars. I think I committed a hundred dollars when I opened it. Um, and that's basically, and then it just stays in there until you buy books. So, okay. We need, yeah, I'm going to write down these workshop ideas. Um, uh, and, uh, I, and Sora, so Sora is an entirely different can of worms. Um, I'm happy to talk about it at lunch with anybody. We, um, uh, we are, uh, basically, uh, functioning as the pilot district for Sora right now with the way that we are running it in our district, um, uh, and trying to get it out to all the schools and all the students. And, um, so I'm happy to, to talk about that, uh, another time. Or later, if we have if we have more time, I'm happy to answer questions about Sora. Okay, so those are the high school ones. I know that's not very many, and I apologize um, because uh, unfortunately Tanya wasn't able to join us today. But that'll give you a few ideas. Definitely, you can adapt some of my middle school ideas to high school as well. Um, so those are our high school ideas. Now we're going to move on to our middle school ideas. So this was. Um, uh, this was at Journey Middle School, which is in Souk. Um, uh, so I did daily announcements. This was an idea that directly came out of the Hacking School Libraries. I did um, every day. We did our announcements on Microsoft Teams last year um, so that they were visual. We had student presenters. Everybody just logged in. Um, and so I would pop in every day and, uh, and just really you know, I'm, I'm sure you can tell by now I've, uh, I've got a lot of energy and I just like to be exciting. And uh, so I would pop in and just be like, good morning, everyone. Here's my book of the day. And, um, and I would tell them about it and sell them on it. And I'd tell, I'd say, let your teacher know if you want it. Um, and I will deliver it to you. And by the time the announcements were done, I usually had two or three emails um, of students who wanted the book right away. So that was a very successful way for me to, um, to talk to the entire student body every single day, get some excitement about a book and get that book in people's hands. Um, so that was super successful. I did um, impulse displays at the, you know, kind of like at the grocery store where they've got all that candy and it's like those impulse buy things when you're at the cash register. So I thought, why don't I try this with books? So I did impulse displays right at the checkout. Like, hey, check out these really great books. This was the theme I was talking about. We, we were just talking about own voices. And I put the new books right next to the checkout computer of like, hey, did you see this? This just came in. It's brand new. You could be the first one to sign it out. Um, you know, just to try to encourage some of that, some of that interest um, and some of that excitement. And, and it did work. A lot of students would see that and, and would go, oh, oh, this is so cool. Oh, can I switch it and take this book instead? And, or can I also take this book? How many books am I allowed to sign out? And, and things like that. So that was kind of fun. Um, virtual, obviously last year, everything was virtual, um, virtual author visits. Um, I found after, so we did two, we participated, um, this is Max Brailer who writes the last kids on earth series. Um, that was a Follett, um, author takeover. So that was free for us. Um, we just, uh, um, tapped into their zoom. Um, it was really great. Our students got to ask questions. They were answered. It was super fun. The kids loved it. Um, and I found my circulation of his books after that, um, session definitely increased. Um, and later in the year, we had Robin Stevenson, um, who zoomed in, uh, during June, we had a whole pride, like we had a whole rainbow week, we were celebrating pride. Um, and, uh, so she talked a lot about, um, about pride, about her books, about, um, uh, social justice, um, and all of those themes and, and all of my Robin Stevenson books were out of the library after she spoke as well. So getting those authors, um, Robin Stevenson, I did have to pay for, um, you can ask your pack. There are ways, um, Max Brailler though, there are free, there are free things out there. So, um, uh, definitely try to find yourself some author visits because, um, uh, it, it, it helps when students hear from, you know, they hear from me every day. 
and I have excitement every day, but I think I know that I eventually start sounding like the Charlie Brown teacher and they just hear wah, 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 when I talk. So sometimes getting them to hear somebody else's voice is all that you need. Um, I partnered with the public library. I would highly recommend partnering with your public library. Um, we did so many fun things. Um, we had a we had a literacy based contest to enter. They had to do something literacy based. I, I, I gave them a whole bunch of suggestions. They made up their own. Um, you know, some people submitted haikus to me. Some people wrote, made me bookmarks. They wrote me book reports. They gave me lists of their favorite books. They gave me book recommendations. It didn't matter what it was. It just had to be literacy based. And then their class was entered um, for a hot chocolate and reading party with the public library that we did virtually. So, um, so our local youth public librarian zoomed in. Um, read us a book while we all sat with our hot chocolate and we just kind of had fun with that. We also had a different class um, challenge our public librarian to a trivia contest. So they got to choose a book. She chose a book. We had a couple of months. We made sure everybody read both books. Um, we did read alouds and, um, and she arranged for um, unlimited user access to the digital copies through the public library as well. I purchased a couple of copies um, and then we had just had a fun Kahoot trivia uh, contest with her um, about the books we chose. Um, and she also created a, a spring break uh, read, listen and learn challenge just for our school. And she put up prizes for that. And I put up prizes for that. So just like there are so many great people you can partner with outside of your building as well. And just keep those people in mind, um, because I know the public librarians here, they, they just want to get connected to kids and um, and we can help them do that and and have some fun along the way. Um, we also did, I did quite a few book smacks with her. Um, if you've never done a book smack, it's like super fun. It's basically a, a timed round of how many books can you book talk and get people excited about and there's timed rounds. So her and I demonstrated some book smacks for um, students and then we had some students challenge her to book smacks. So there's all sorts of fun things you can do and, and uh, I helped them prepare, made, help them come up with book lists and, and practice and things like that. Um, and contests, we did poem in your pocket day. Um, and everybody who who had a poem and came and read it to me at some point during the day got entered. I had um, bookstore gift cards for that one. Um, I just bought them um, from my budget because uh, with some of this stuff, it's like, you know, uh, $60 for three book card for three um, you know, I can give up $60 and, and, and get some excitement for reading is my personal opinion. Um, I did a, I did a bookmark making contest. Um, and I, uh, I had free books donated from one of the local bookstores that my winner chose from. I did March Madness Battle of the Books. So March Madness, like the similar to, um, like the NCAA basketball tournament and where we started with a certain number. Um, and we had weekly voting on um, Google Forms. Um, and I announced the winners every week and what the new matchups were. And um, so that was really fun. Um, the, the way that I did this, though, was I filled the brackets with student, um, with student suggestions. So they were not my choices. All the initial books that we started with came from students. They were the books that students wanted to see put up against each other. Um, and I took any and all suggestions that were appropriate for our grade levels. And if we did not own the book, I made sure to purchase the book so that we then owned at least one copy of every single book that got put up in March Madness. And the circulation for those was huge um, just because there was so much excitement. Um, my staff, a lot of my staff did get it on board for that one. Um, and they really helped me with the weekly voting and getting their kids in there and voting and choosing. And there was just so much buzz. This was a huge, huge bulletin board in our foyer. Um, and I had teachers tell me that they would walk by with their class to get to the gym and all the students would be like, oh, which one are you voting for? Oh, I hope this one wins. And, and so it just created that buzz. It created that conversation. Um, 
the kids were not able to read all of the books. Um, most of the books were books that they had already read. Um, popular favorites, like you can see Diary of Wimpy Kids there, Hunger Games is there, Wonder is there, like three different Harry Potter books are there, James and the Giant Peach. So they weren't necessarily new books for everybody, um, but there were a lot of favorites, a lot of graphic novel favorites. Um, so books that students already had connections with. Um, and I, I worked to try to, in, in, uh, increase student choice. Um, I know I'm running low on time and I want you be, to be able to share ideas. Um, so I did a pilot, um, project, um, uh, getting Sora and, um, getting, um, audiobooks to students, um, to see if, we could get some of those and hook some of those reluctant readers, some of those readers that are really turned off. And, and for some of them, it's just that they're not interested. For some of them, it's that um, they're, they're, they want to be reading the same books as their peers, and they just don't have um, the skills. They just cannot read the books at that level, but they really want to be. So we tried to get at that from the audiobook perspective. And um, one of my later here, the next one is, um, uh, and I did this too late in the year. I would do this and I'm currently doing it at my new school right now. I would do this earlier in the year to do it again, but we did a really big push of, I am a reader and that everyone is a reader and that every way every way that you read or consume text is a valid way of reading so all of these little all of these pictures and all of these are speech bubbles and so i invited people to take a picture this is just one of those like foam like trifold boards that i cut up to make it like an instagram kind of you know outline a um, border um and uh, so I invited students and staff to take pictures with that. And then they filled out a little speech bubble that said, I am a reader because, and any and everything that they said was acceptable because I read skateboarding magazines, because I read the news, because I listen to audiobooks, anything that they wanted to share. We just wanted to celebrate and help everybody identify as a reader. And so going back to my um, oops, going back to this, that was, oh, sorry, I'm having issues with my mouse. That was why we really tried to get at the audiobooks was to help those readers who are never going to pick up a book, um, like this, help them still identify as a reader that listening to a book is still reading. Um, I also have a, had a beautiful deck. And so I started opening the deck when the weather was nice and let just let the kids sit out in the sunshine and just the difference of them being able to sit somewhere that was a little bit nicer with a little bit of sunshine somewhere that wasn't at a desk. They really appreciated that. So that's that. Um, there's my Emma reader. So we were most successful when we included fun student involvement and prizes. Obviously, everybody loves a good prize. And um, what didn't work so well? Uh, teacher support, is, is, that's ongoing. Um, and, and just like Keely said at the end of the keynote, not everybody's going to work with you. Um, I still have to work hard every day to not take that personally. Um, I know it's hard. I There have been many days I have been crying because it's like, nobody wants to do what I'm trying to do. And so I get it. It is so hard. Um, um, so, you know, that's something I'm still working on. Um, and this is a quote from the Hacking School Libraries, promoting literacy and reading for enjoyment is a mission for all librarians, and it should include adults as well. The more adults they see reading, the more our students will try it themselves. Um, and then reaching new readers and connecting readers with each other. This is something I definitely tried. I don't know that I was successful. Um, I don't think I was entirely successful. It's something that I will also continue focusing on is that is that making reading a group activity connecting those readers with each other um and and just making it an enjoyable um activity that we all share um and reaching new readers that's always hard um, but i think we were able to do that with some of our like with the i am i am a reader campaign and the audiobooks um we had one class that ended up with um six of our ten um, tablets to access ebooks and audiobooks. And that one teacher 
we, it didn't start with our target students. It started, we actually got one of our cool students first who, who, who he wanted to participate. It was offered, it ended up being offered to everybody. He wanted to participate once everybody else saw, oh, hey, he, oh, okay. Well, I want one too. I want one too. They ended up with six in their classroom. And by the end of the year, she said it was just so transformational for her class because we did end up getting our target students. And then those students were like, they were no longer avoiding silent reading time. They were no longer causing problems. When they finished their work, they would go and say, hey, can I get my tablet out? Because I really want to keep listening to that book. So so I think we we started getting there, reaching new readers, but it's definitely like, it's, it's still a work in progress. Okay, I know there's some things in the chat. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, how did I push out the Google survey? My school last year did a um, like a weekly um, teacher memo. Um, it came out on Sunday every day. So I had the new link in the teacher memo for the for voting. But I also I was just a regular on the school announcement um, there. There were probably less than 10 days in the entire school year that I was not on the announcements. I was just kind of always there going like, hey guys, this is what we're doing in the library. Here's my book. Don't forget about my contest. Don't forget to vote. And so I was just always on there promoting things, talking about things, being energetic, just uh, getting out there and, and connecting with the kids. Um, oh, top 50 books in Destiny. That's a great idea for choosing your battle of the books options. Um, uh, I don't, I honestly, I don't know about a good place to, I'm happy to share my experience. I don't know about a good place to learn about March Madness. I just kind of, I saw a picture online and I just made it up myself and just went with it. Um, I'm kind of a, in case you haven't figured it out, I'm a jump in with two feet type of person. And I'm just going to be like, well, I'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. And we're just, we're just going to do it. We're just going to go for it and see what happens. Um, oh, as ballot. Oh, so ballots for, for voting uh, for the little stickers, uh, for matchups. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you, Lisa. Um, oh yeah. Then I, yeah, I agree. If we can make partnerships between the middle school and secondary school, um, then that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, me too, Lisa. I, I take so much from the public libraries. They are awesome. And I, I just make friends with the, the local youth public librarians. And, um, and I'm in there all the time with my own kids and we chat and I send them emails all the time. And I ask that I just email them and say, hey, this is my idea. Are you interested? Um, do you want to participate with me? And, and they usually say yes. Okay. I know we are, did I, did I, because we started five minutes late, do I get five extra minutes? Yes, okay. Because I don't want to make you late for your next presentation as well. And I want you to be able to have a break. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna pop this link in because um, uh, I did, I, and I, I, I truly apologize. We did not, I did not leave enough time for you guys to share your ideas. So I'm sorry. Um, but I'm going to pop in this link here into the chat um, because I made a Google Doc. Um, I typed in a list with um, all of the ideas that I talked about, not really with details, but just a list of them. Um, and then I put it up. My intention was to make breakout groups. I don't think we I don't know. Do you want me? To, do we want breakout groups for the last five minutes? And then I, uh, I expected maybe about nine groups. And so that's why the chart is on the bottom so that you guys could talk as a smaller group, share some ideas with each other and populate some ideas in the, in the document. Do we want to do that for the last few minutes? Or do we want to like, I just wasn't sure if it would be too many people talk, trying to talk at the same time if we all like all opened our mics and talked in the big group. Just stay together. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm happy to uh, share my screen again and, uh, and I will record and type any, and if you guys want to go ahead and take turns, um, 
um, just sharing ideas. I will record them. Just go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, I will start typing. Um, this is Lisa. I don't have my camera on just reasons. No problem. Uh, <laughs> All good. No, you never have to explain. Um, I started getting, I um, don't do the audiobooks through the tablets, but I do buy the playaways from uh, Follett. Um, not directly from Follett. I get them from most of them from ULS. And then I also have a subscription with Junior Library Guild and they have, um, they're called Go Readers, but it's the same concept. And they pretty, they don't stay on the shelf very much. I have a ton of kids um, who either struggle with reading or English is not is their uh, second language. And I always try to make sure that my, the audiobooks that I buy have a, um, a print copy on the shelf. And so I encourage them to check both out together so that they can follow along in the book as they're listening to it. And um, it's been really, um, there are kids who are, that they're just so excited that it counts, quote unquote, as uh, reading a book. One of my big challenges is I have a, I work with a great couple of grade eight teachers. I'm uh, middle school, five through eight, who don't believe that graphic novels are reading. So <laughs> it's very painful. And even when they're doing novel studies, she's like, no graphic novels. And it's like, but what if I, you know, there's all these really complex graphic novels, like Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me and the Prince and the Dressmaker. And this is our pact. And she's just like, you know, no graphic novels whatsoever. It's not reading it. Yeah. So, and so it's really, is, and go ahead. Sorry. I, and I don't know that she dismisses the kids who, you know, again, because we know there's a ton of reading levels. And so she's kind of dismissive about kids who are in grade eight and who are still going for Die of a Wimpy Kid or Geronimo Stilton or whatever, because it's either that's their comfort level. It's their the book version of their whoopee, because this is a really this is not a very stable time right now. And it's kind of like and she's in so many words made it known that she doesn't think those books are quote unquote good enough yeah. for them or advanced enough for them. And it's just kind of like, why are you judging? Stop being so judgy. Yes. So something I have done in the past with teachers like that is um, I have offered and then, and then kind of just gone ahead and done it. Um, uh, teaching elements of a graphic novel. There's a really great Prezi I did not create it. You will be able to find it. I use it all the time. Um, that teaches the elements of a graphic novel. It talks about line weight. It talks about color. It talks about the shape of the, the like thought bubble or speech bubble. It So it goes through and actually teaches. And it, like it talks about how pictures show movement, the faces, all of those visual elements of a graphic novel. Be, and then I talk about how you have to read the pictures to read a graphic novel. You cannot only read the text and understand what's happening in the story. You also have to decode what's happening in the picture because half of your half of your reading, half of your information is coming from that picture. They don't have a, enough text. So, and I've tried doing that and, and teaching that to the classes with the teacher in the room. And I, I have won over a few people doing that. Um, not that it works with everybody, but yeah, yeah. An inference as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But again, some of those people you may just never win over, unfortunately. And I have always also used like with lit circles and things like that. I've used some of those Orca, the great, like the high low Orcas and, um, and, and snuck some of those in as, as options. Oh, picture books are for everyone. I love picture books. And I just, I read picture books to everyone all the time. And I just say, isn't it just so nice to be able to look at pictures and hear a wonderful story? And so I just do it. And you can also connect. Oh, May is po is it May? April poetry month? April's poetry month, right? Um, and uh, so I always do a really big focus on picture books in April for poetry month and make the connection to picture books and poetry to wrap. And if you have never seen... If you have never seen, um, um, who is it? Uh, um, anyways, if you have never seen, if you search Llama Llama Red Pajama Wrap on YouTube, 
Oh, it is so, so good. Um, and there is a radio station in the United States that does, um, that has all of their guests, uh, um, wrap Llama Llama Red Pajama from a board book. And, um, can I, can I, this is Chelsea. Yeah. Can I just say something about the picture books for older readers? Yes. I did something I read to all my grade eights. I work at a high school and I read to all my grade eights, a picture book a day for, um, you know, how you have vlog mess. Oh yes. Yes. I did um uh read mass so i read a book to all the grade eights and then we had a tree and we put a picture of the picture book and decorated the tree so 25 days well 24 days of christmas and it was called read mass and at first i got some roll of the eyes from the kids but if i if my schedule got changed and i happened to miss a day the kids eventually halfway in would see me in the hallway and be like, Hey, Miss Shoyamo, you didn't read to it us today. When are you coming back? So eventually they had to buy it. And we focused on literary elements, every book. So figurative language, plot, theme, whatever. <clears throat> and it was, it was a huge success. I was super busy reading to six blocks of grade eights for a whole yeah. <laughs> Because everybody really does love it. It's just that they think they're too cool. Um, any other ideas? I know, I, and feel free to start dropping out. If uh, Thank you for being here. Um, next session, I think, is starting in about 10 minutes. Um, I will put into the chat um, my Twitter handle, Teacher Nick Wall. You cannot find me if you search Nicole Wallace because there is a American political pundit named Nicole Wallace, and I used to get spammed because she has opinions one way or the other about Trump and People kept thinking I was her. Um, so I am teacher Nick Wall on Wallace. My email for, is nwallace at sd62.bc.ca. I'm happy to share ideas. Um, I didn't share my slides only because it's just full of pictures um, from myself and um, and Tanya. Um, but but please uh, keep the document. The document's for you. Um, make a copy. Um, keep the link. Uh, go back to it. Add more ideas if you want. Um, and I just, I really appreciate you being here. Um, I will add the Prezi link to the reading promotion ideas document. Yes. Yes. And I'm sorry, I didn't give you enough time to all talk, but stick around and share some ideas if you want to. <laughs>